Hi friends, my name is Wan. Claims is an important aspect of purchasing an insurance. After all, we purchase insurance to cover our risk. And in the event the risk happens, we expect the insurance company to pony up, right? In a claims process, there are a few key areas to get done correctly so that the claim can be paid out. The first is, is the claim claimable under your policy? If you'd like to claim for private hospitalization allowance, for example, you'd first have to make sure that you have the coverage in your policy. The second is, is the claim listed under an exclusion? For example, you may want to claim for a maternity-related illness, but this is generally excluded under medical plans. Additionally, you'd want to be sure that the claim has already fulfilled its waiting period. The third one is, are the correct forms used? And have they been filled out correctly and completely? The fourth is, the necessary supporting documents that need to be appended, like the doctor's report, lab results, MRI and CT scan results, death certificate, etc. Number five is, where death is involved, does the policy have a nominee stated? While these requirements might sound lengthy and laborious, they are necessary for the correct claim and the correct amount of claims to be fulfilled. In addition, it prevents the likelihood of fraud, not only to the company, but even the insured. Of course, a good agent will have the paperwork sorted out quickly as we have just got used to it. There are a few memorable claims that I like to share, both successes and failures I've had so that we can learn from it. The first example is a death claim. A client in Indonesia unfortunately passed away this year due to an accident. She bought an investment link medical plan from me a few years ago, which meant it came with some life insurance. While there were no claims made on the medical side, the life insurance was not too small and when converted into rupiah, it became even more sizable. If the person were a Malaysia resident, the declaration would only need a death certificate and the beneficiary's account number. Since the beneficiary was also based in Indonesia, there was a lot more documentation to be submitted, like their IC equivalent identification, the passport, the birth certificate to ascertain familial ties, the full works of the bank account, including the scan of the bank book and SWIFT code, as well as getting a few forms and letters signed digitally. I was told that domestic death claims are done within three days, and amazingly, this claim was approved and paid out to the foreign bank account in just under one week. The second example is a medical claim of angioplasty. So, the waiting period for heart-related claims is 120 days after purchasing the insurance policy, and that is about four months. The client underwent an angioplasty procedure in his fifth month of purchasing the insurance, but had submitted that he had gone for a medical checkup in his third month of purchasing the insurance, and the medical checkup indicated a heart-related anomaly. The claim was initially declined because the view taken was that the treatment commenced before the waiting period was over. I read the contract closely and submitted that there was no pre-existing condition prior to taking up the insurance, and I had proof to support it. And the condition was diagnosed post taking up the insurance was immaterial. Treatments that are done after the 120-day waiting period are claimable. This is what the contract says. Of course, I was right and awesome. The claim was approved in full for about 50,000 ringgit. The final example is a medical claim and this is related to government hospitalization allowance. When I joined AIA in 2015, all medical policies sold then had this obscure benefit called the government hospitalization allowance. Basically, if you were admitted to a government hospital instead of a private one, because the bill would be much cheaper compared to going private and you save AIA so much money, there's a token of appreciation of 100 ringgit per day of admission. Claims for this benefit was very low. After all, everyone prefers going to private hospitals. There was little to no reason why you'd opt to go to a government hospital except for maybe an emergency where that was the nearest hospital. This was true until COVID-19 where everyone goes to government hospitals because of government mandates. Thinking that the allowance benefit was a permanent fixture in all policies, I wrongly told clients that their COVID admission was claimable, even though they bought newer policies that had different terms and they excluded the government hospitalization allowance for the newer plans. So I was wrong and the claim was declined, time was wasted getting the doctor's report and most importantly, lesson learned. We have to read the policy again and make sure what we say is correct and true. Thank you everyone.